All right, it's 3 o'clock. We'll call our regular monthly meeting to order. Before we get started, are there any conflicts of interest that need to be declared by any of the commissioners today? No. No. All right, here, now we'll move on to agenda item number two is to approve the consent agenda, approve the minutes, and ratify the payment of bills. Was there anything anybody needed to pull out of that? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. By, <laughs> motion by Don, <laughs> second by Kathy. <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Item three is to approve the financial statements. I have a couple of quick things to mention on the electric. You'll see uh, salaries and benefits were up. Um, part of it's due to accrued wages, accruing a couple things back, and then also charged less to work orders, like a fair amount. We must have had a few more projects last year. And then also you'll see the operating expense up about 86,000, uh, 50,000 of that, some parts for unit one, and then about 45 of that's <coughs> distribution on transformers and line. And obviously that comes right out of inventory, so that's even a non-cash item, but 45,000 extra this year compared to last year. Non-cash for that month, I guess. It's still gotta be replaced. And the only other thing I was gonna mention was chasing interest rates a little bit. I pretty much pulled almost all the money out of our savings at Home State Bank moved it back over to citizens, just about 2% interest difference. That's all I have. All right, thank you, Jared. Anybody have any comments, questions on the financial statements? Oh, not for me. Anybody care to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the financial statements. Motion by Kathy. One second. Second by Anthony. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Open forum. No new guests today. Item five, communication. City administrator. Mm -hmm. A couple of things. Uh, early voting has started, so for the upcoming elections, we do that at City Center. Um, I know everyone enjoys our leaf vacuum service. That starts October 11th. Um, and then we're just wrapping up. Our street projects are done for the year. And then job by the police facility, we're starting to sheetrock inside and everything, so that's going well. Hope to be in there by January. So that's it. All yeah. right, thank you. 5B is divisions. Dan? Nothing new today. Thank you. Nothing new. Thank you. Nothing new. Thank you. <laughs> Got anything for us? I gotta say something. <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of paper. <laughs> I had a meeting uh, last Friday afternoon, late afternoon, with um, Hartman Corn Products. Uh, they wanted to discuss their transmission line project that they're going to be building next year. Um, they're finding the permit, the route permit process challenging, if I may say. Um, they'll get through it, but it's just, it's tough. Um, <laughs> It's tougher than ours was, and they, they've changed it. Um, they just wanted to meet with us to discuss, uh, number one, they want us to operate it for them. And I think it'd be fantastic for us. Um, and then uh, if we operate, then they asked us our choice of equipment that, that they were gonna install, what, they, what, what we would like to see, which was nice, rather than having to learn all new equipment. Uh, so we had, a, we had a very good meeting. Uh, there were three people from Heartland Corn, uh, plus their in, uh, they had engineers on the phone, and then their, their consultant was here. Uh, so it went very well. Uh, they still don't know what kind of, what their maximum volume is going to be yet for the, for the station. Uh, they're flowing about 12,000 MCF a day right now, or 12,000 decatherms a day right now. Uh, they're still adding, they're still talking about adding future electric generation. So I'm feeling it's going to end up between 17 and 19,000 a day, which is fantastic uh, for us anyway. Uh, the station will be very simple. There'll be a lot more equipment of ours in there than theirs. Um, and they have six point, uh, six and a half miles of pipe to run. And then they'll install new facilities at their end as well. So it was, it was a good meeting. Hmm. Hopefully we can be flowing gas in October 1 next year. Exciting. All right, thank you. 
Um, human resources. Angie, you got anything? Um, just continuing to work on the 2023 health insurance and dental insurance rates. All right, thank you. Legal, Mark? <laughs> Nothing today. Nothing. General manager, Jeremy? Just a couple things. Obviously, we're getting into budget capital time of the year, so we've got, we've got the capital budget out there, and so the managers, are gonna, when they have some time, go on and start updating the five-year capital budget. So guys will be working on that, and then I'm working through some of the operating side of the things right now, just kind of finalizing some personal benefit cost things. You know, Angie's um, working with Rich to try to figure out where we're going to be with the medical and, and dental and some of our ancillary services. So I'll plug that stuff in once we get going, and then I'll put that out there, and we'll have the managers go and start updating their operating budgets in the next several weeks. So hopefully, you know, by the end of October, um, I'll be able to take a look at, see all the preliminary budgets shaping up um, as we kind of move forward. Hopefully at that time, we'll have the cost of service study. We'll have some preliminary information back on that. So obviously the faster we can get that stuff updated and I can take a look at how the five-year CIP is looking, how the operating budget's looking, how the five-year forecast is looking. If we need to tweak some things and send some things back to the consultants or the cost of service study, um, then we'll do that so that they can get the most up-to-date information and we can, so we can see how things are shaping up. Um, uh, that'll be good, so we're, that'll be full force. So obviously we'll kind of look at the same type of um, format unless you guys want to change something. We'd have a preliminary workshop sometime in November. We'll look at some of the preliminary numbers, um, kind of gauge you know, where you guys maybe want to go before we adopt kind of a final budget in December. Obviously some things we've talked about, you know, depending on what comes out of the cost of service study, we may need to have I'm meeting to talk about where we're at with our glide paths and our rates and how that's shaping up with where our operating costs are. Obviously, there's no surprise to you guys. We're just paying way more for materials. Um, you know, moving forward, lead times, cost of materials are going up. I'm already starting to see that in our five-year CIP plan. Um, you know, we've talked about stuff internally about staff, just, you know, where do we go with some of these things when, you know, we order things and we may not get it for two years. So, you know, we'll have to work through some of those dynamics. Nothing insurmountable, but we'll have to just take a look at that. and spend a little bit more time on some of those things and kind of where we think some things are going uh, from that regard. So so I'll keep you guys updated on that stuff. And um, if I think some things are really getting out of whack, something really looks kind of out of the ordinary, you know, I may, I may ask you guys to you know, stop in or, or give me a call and we can kind of work through some of those things um, in a little bit more in depth versus it, you know, coming to a meeting and uh, looking at it for the first time. But I'll let you guys know well ahead of time if, you know, there's some areas of issues, concerns, or things that maybe you guys want to take a little bit, you know, longer time to think about, uh, particularly as it comes to the cost of service study as well. So we've kind of got those things kind of moving down the same kind of path at the same time. So hopefully, you know, you guys will have plenty of time to wrap your brain around some of those things if we need to um, from that regard. I think your approach is good. I liked how we did it last year with the budget, having the preliminary and then a final after that. But to your point, if there is something that maybe we don't expect to see or that's going to be an outlier from what we've come to know from the financial performance of the utility. Give us a heads up sooner the better and take that approach that you, that you mentioned. Yep, I'll certainly do that. <clears throat> so just working through that, the other area, just some news, um, Missouri River, they have a kind of a side organization called Western Minnesota Municipal Power Agency that's basically their shoot off of MRES that owns all the assets of MRES. We just went through their bond rating call <coughs> over a week ago. They got graded, upgraded uh, from Moody's from an A, A3 to an AA2. And then they also got reconfirmed by um, Fitch with an AA minus rating. So they're essentially refinancing $50 million of debt uh, that Merlin had put back in, in a kind of a look back provision piece, which was smart back at the time to do that. So they're going to save about $3.5 million in interest costs over the remaining kind of life of the refinancing. So that went well, stable outlook for MRES um, moving forward, which means when they look like a stable outlook, that means all their members look stable. So that was about a half hour phone call with the two rating agencies, bond council. So it went very well. So I talked with Chris, he's their new CFO there. Merlin retired last year. Talked with him a little bit off the side. So things are going good from, uh, from that standpoint from MRES. We do have an area meeting coming up in Alexandria. Uh, they've went back to kind of the smaller area meetings, so they're going to have four of those coming up here. And so Jared and I typically go to the one in Alexandria in October. just happens to be on the same day we have our board meeting. So we'll have to kind of play that out. But that's where they'll go through their five-year forecast, what their budgets look like, how their ratings are doing, how their reserves are looking. 
um, and we'll kind of go from there. They are working on a uh, stored water pump project that's kind of in the preliminary works. Um, they've been working with the Corps of Engineer on a, on a big water area up in the Dakotas. That looks like about a $600 million project uh, that they're wondering, seeing if they can get that you know, through the Corps of Engineers, through the communities up there. Um, if that happens, it would generate about 1,800 megawatts of power. Uh, so they're going through the preliminary analysis and seeing if, if that's something that's viable, and then the, they're talking with the markets and things of that nature. So they anticipate if that thing continually moves forward, uh, to be probably 2026 um, by the time they would, you know, start construction and, and doing some of that. But it's a sizable project within the membership. You know, they put the Red Rock Hydro plant in that was 350 million dollars, but that is only about a 50 megawatt project. Uh, this one would be obviously almost double the cost, but way more output, which is a piece that we've talked about of transitioning more into carbon free and more renewables. And their membership is, you know, obviously looking for that, so they know that they need to diversify some of their portfolio as well from the wholesale side of things. And so they're looking at some of these other projects to see if, if they can make them work. So, so that's kind of what's going on with MRS as well. But things are looking good from their standpoint, and we'll get more feedback here in the next month on. You know how things are shaping up right now. The last we heard, there wasn't going to be a rate increase until at least 2025, 20, 26. So we'll see if that's still the case. If it's not, if they see some other things uh, coming down the pipe uh, from that regard. So. How many megawatts is the 600 million dollar project? 1,800 megawatts. 1,800 megawatts. Okay. And is there uh, is there growth and demand in their territory, or is this to backfill some? generation that's getting sunsetted or uh, I think it's a combination of both I think it's less probably demand driven as it is um, going more carbon free um, they feel that this will qualify as it's similar to battery storage it's going to be a, a way that they can store energy and release it on the market there's a need for it in the market as a whole uh, from some more of those kind of intermittent resources or kind of resources if they're pulling off coal and natural gas. So I think it's as much of a membership demand as it is, as it is maybe a market uh, piece of adding that type of load into the system or potential load uh, that's more green. So then there's a kind of a combination of a couple different angles that they're looking at it from. Obviously, anytime you get into doing projects around waterways, you know, there's significant environmental impact concerns. There's the Corps of Engineers. They're working with a different Corps of Engineers, obviously a different site because the hydro plant is in Pella, Iowa. This one's going to be in the Dakotas, so it's a different group of Army Corps of Engineers and federal agencies they have to work with. But it's a similar process as far as permitting and site plans and environmental impacts and how would you remediate impacts and. Are you going to disrupt fish, you know, downstream and all those types of things? So it's a long process, but it's a significant load increase as far as clean energy that the market likes. So they're generally supportive at this point of the concept of the project, uh, but they really have to get into the details and, and kind of work through that. So, so we'll see if that where that piece goes in the short-term future. They're also looking at some of the renewable projects with some of our members down in Marshall and some of the areas where they've got some significant land of trying to diversify um, a little bit more. They buy a lot off the market right now. So, it, you know, they're kind of looking at balancing between market purchases and owning their own assets and moving that direction to, you know, carbon, more carbon-free stuff. So they're looking at things just like we are, just on a different scale um, for their members. And um, so... So that's what's going on in, in the wholesale world, at least as far as HEC is concerned. So, all right. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, item six of policies looks like there was a bunch to review and a couple to make changes to. Uh, yep. Angie. Yep. So for the travel expenses for both exempt and not exempt, we're going to be making the same change. Uh, we're looking to add the meal gratuity reimbursement. Um, that shall not exceed 20% of the bill and is included in the daily maximum. All right, sounds simple. Anybody care to make a motion to approve this? Motion to approve the proposed changes. Motion by Anthony. I'll second that. Second by Don. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> motion carries. <coughs> 
We have no unfinished business. We'll move on to item eight, new business approved requisition 009328, City of Hutchinson LED street lights 2022. Dave. Yeah, we, um, <clears throat> we, did, we are in our first year right now, the LED conversion, and we planned about six to eight years to convert the city over to LED. Um, we need this rec to go. It'll be in 2023's budget, and they won't, won't be invoiced until then. It's about a four month lead time to get the lights. We hope to get them in February to start installing them through the through March and April before our busy season. So again, we did the same thing last year. We ordered them actually in October last year, but we're moving up a little bit this year to see if we can um, get them coming sooner. Mm -hmm. um, I do apologize for the first rec I put in there. I misunderstood that the cost of the, it was a cost adjustment that we received on Friday. So that's the new the new requisition that's in there. So looking for approval for that. How many total lights are there? Uh, total lights, um, right around about 1,800, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so we've, we've, done, <laughs> we've done 200. You must have you on the, you're not on the <laughs> residential street in town. You're kind of. Yeah, that's true. Dark where I live. Well, that's your nice. light. Do you know. <laughs> and what do you do with the old bulbs? We have to recycle them, take them to the McLeod County Recycling Center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but in the old fixtures, they're, they're, there's nothing left of them. We, we, we are able to salvage the uh, glass, though. So we're able to reuse the glass, which helps a lot. That's, sure. that's about a $400 value there. So. Oh. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions on this requisition? <clears throat> motion, care to? motion to approve requisition 9328 City of Hutchinson LED streetlight conversion. I'll second it. Motion by Anthony, second by Bob. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion is approved. And then item number nine is to adjourn. I'll make the motion to adjourn. Motion by Bob. I'll second. Second by Kathy. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.